Hello, uh, welcome once again. I came across something that I think is pretty beneficial to students starting out in automotive or in electronics um, profession. When we always talk about schematics, let's say we're looking for something. Let's say we, we put a scanner and we get a code for crankshaft sensor or camshaft sensor. We go to the schematic itself and we come across multi-multi sensors. We come across this one, CKP or CMP. We're not sure if that's the right one. After all, the scanner gave us a code. We have a crank and no start, right? We know the starter mode is good. We know the engine is trying to turn over, but it's not capable right now. The computer is not giving fuel. So we think from the code that it has something to do with the crankshaft. It has to get the signal from the crankshaft sensor. Now, not to go too many details into the sensor itself. It's a different issue that I'll go into. But how do I derive my, my assumption and my analyzation to prove to myself I'm at the right one? Now, I use a manual from the dealership or their multi, like Mitchell and all these. Let's say this computer over here. I know I see pins over here, but I'm not sure what the function is of each pin. We know ground is ground. That's self-explanatory. We know uh, uh, ignition, let's say, 12 volts going to the vo to, to, to the fuse. We know that's 12 volts, B plus supply. We know that. But coming across the other ones, we're at a loss and we're confused. What all these stand for, what they mean? So when you come to the view of, of the manual, it gives you a, almost a pictorial or visual of the pins itself. Now, on for powertrain control module for PCM, for the connected two, this is connected two. So there's connector one, connector two, connector three, connector four, all these things, and these are the pin references. And obviously, these are the, the wire colors. The circuit number, you don't have to worry about that. This is the explanation what they are for. So, like you see over here, pin 46 is a malfunction control, 47, the shift solenoid valve control. So, at least you have some idea what the pins are for. So, if oxygen sensor over here, bank 1, sensor 1, is pin 72 and it's a black wire, that helps you in understanding a little better what the module is, is referring to. You can f follow the wires, and you can follow it, and eventually it'll bring you to that sensor. But I always use this as, as a guide for me, especially, I think, for beginners in, in automotive school. They should use all the information that they have in front of them so that they can get used to using different type of diagrams, not just schematics. So let's say, again, let's come back to this one over here. We're not sure. Camshaft sensor. Is that camshaft sensor or is this camshaft sensor, CKP or CMP? Let's go for CMP, okay? We have three wires over here. Now, this is for a different one. This is for Honda and Asian cars. This manual is for GM. However, the, the crisscross or the reference is the same idea. And you'll understand what I'm saying. Let's say over here, we thought CMP, what does it stand for? We come to the this part, which which describes the connectors. We try to figure out what CMP is. CMP is the camshaft position sensor. So it already it already helped me identify what CMP stands for. Even though I'm looking for crankshaft sensor, that's where the code is from the scanner. That's okay. That's okay. But that's how you learn. So in this graph or pictorial it tells you there are three connections as should be for a camshaft position sensor it shows you the view and what type of connector it is the black indicates this is a black connector over here so the connector itself has three pins we know starting from this one a b and c so let's say I need the voltage. I want to make sure that this camshaft position sensor has the proper voltage going to it. I looked at the schematic. It confused me entirely. I, don't, I wasn't sure if I was at the right point. 
This is where this is valuable information. What pin over here can I measure to tell me if I have 12 volts? As you see over here, if you go to pin C over here, oops, go to pin C right here, it would be a red wire going to it. And it would be the 12 volt reference. So right away, I know, looking at the visual at this right away, I know this wire, the red one, I'm supposed to have 12 volts. The low reference, which is the ground, which wire would that be? Would be this one. It would be A, the ground. And it would be a pink plus a black stripe wire. The signal going back, giving information, if the camshaft is turning, would go back to the computer. They call that the sensor signal. Whenever you see sensor signal, think of it as a feedback to the computer. Hey, so you have 12 volts, you have a ground, and you have a sensor giving information about the rotation of the camshaft. Okay, so it helped us understand it, even though that's not the one that we're actually looking for. That's okay. Let's come across another example until we re really understand this. In this, the GM, in the world of GM, that they create their own such uh, essential sequential fuel injection system, uh, like on, uh, on all these uh, um, on the Tahoes and all these uh, um, uh, Blazers and all these cars that they have and all that Suburbans. So they have like a puppet nozzle, it's called, an essential system where one fuel injector goes into other ones. It's like a spider uh, uh, fuel injection system, they call it. And anyway, it goes to a connector. When the GM works, the when it works, it works great. When it doesn't work great, it is one hell of a, of a nightmare to take everything out to get to this connector. They make it so hard that you have to take everything to just to get one point so the fuel pressure that you measure has to be correct you have to analyze everything else and once you take it apart if it takes you an hour you have to replace that part you don't take everything out and say well it must be good i'll go put it back together no that's a lot of work once you derive at your conclusion that this might be less of this connector or uh, uh, the fuel injectors, whatever. They are bad. After doing all that work, you have to replace it. Go tell the customer, well, it took me two hours just to put it back, but that wasn't the problem. Can't do that. You have to derive at a conclusion for yourself saying, I know this is, this is, this is the bad part. Now, as you see over here, as you see over here, this would be A, B, C, D, E, F. Now you come down here. You don't go over here. So it's going this way, going this way, going this way, almost like a chip, uh, an IC chip. So let's say I want, uh, uh, let's say I want the B pluses over here, going to the fuel injector. We know fuel injectors get 12 volts. And we know the fuel injector, like I made the other video, also get the ground from the control wires from the uh, um, the PCM, from the uh, computer module. So therefore, let's say I need to measure 12 volts at the connector after taking so many things apart. So anyway, usually pink for GM is usually 12 volts. Ignition, one voltage. Where would I go? D and E. So let's find D and E. A, B, C, D and E. So these two would be 12 volts, among others that you have, H, J, and all these. So let's say L, ignition one, J, H, right? Going across here, over here, you come to M, fuel injector control, that's a, that's a ground. So therefore, you have to look at each one, rather than numbering them, these geniuses, they put lettering over here for whatever reason. So therefore, there are many, many ignition B pluses depending how many uh, uh, fuel injectors. Here are six fuel injectors. You'll have six voltages, ignition one voltages. You get the, I think you get the point. So that's that.
it's helpful. Let's come to the other one that we started this whole video 10, 10 minutes ago that I started. Now, we said, what does CKP stand for? I looked at this and I said to you, I have a problem with CKP. Engine is cranking but not starting, right? So, CKP, sensor over here. I come to this manual and it tells me CKP, sure enough, that's what I'm looking for. And sure enough, it's a black connector. But it's hard to find, obviously, by the crankshaft. So anyway, I want to make sure I get 12 volts over there. If I would have access to it. What do I do? Same principle as before. Same principle. A, B, C. I want to make sure I have 12 volts. Which one do I go to? A. It's a light green wire. The one that goes to the light green wire, which is which, which is this one. So which one? 12 volts right here. The ground is B. Which one is B? Ground. Ground. Which one will give back the, the information that the crankshaft is turning so that the computer can, it, can ground the fuel injectors to give fuel and spark with, ti with, with uh, proper timing? Right here, over here, CKP sensor signal. That's C, which is a yellow one, and that's a signal where? Back to PCM. Okay? So, how helpful is this? Like I said before, I started this whole video saying students starting out and all these things, not just schematics are important. These configurations for connectors are very important. Engine engine cooling temperature when you go in the schematic itself you'll see this ect you're saying to yourself what what does that mean well sure enough you come across this section and it tells you what it means engine cooling temperature we have to know the temperature of the coolant right now let's say let's say i want to know the signal ect sensor signal right there's a sensor that goes the sensor the signal that goes back to the um the computer to tell it the voltage remember as the coolant goes higher in temperature right these things have a negative coefficient that means the resistance goes down the voltage goes down so it was if it was five volts then it'll go down less obviously than five volts it cannot go more than five volts but that sensor signal will go back and give information to B. They both gotta go to the PCM. They both go to the PCM. The critical one is B, this one, that it will give the proper information of the temperature. And another thing, if you're not sure of the of the sensor itself, how much voltage it gets, five volts or 12 volts, how much easier can it be when it tells you right here, 12 volt reference, it gets 12 volts right here and you know right away it's 12 volts some get 5 volts like this one so if you go through it if you go through whatever you're looking for the fuel pump uh, sender uh, send unit you have f fuel pump supply voltage 12 volts right even doesn't say it this one over here is a black connector also so A, B, C, D these are two different, there's a ground utility, ground pickup, depending which truck you have, but that's okay. So basically, the grounds, right, one is given by the computer, and the fuel pump supply voltage is the critical one for us, because we want to make sure we have 12 volts. Which one is the critical one? B. We want to make sure we have 12 volts here. So, like I said, this is one of the most helpful guides in teaching, in teaching students in automotive, oxygen sensor. How many times have you seen a code for oxygen sensor? And you go to AutoZone and get a new one. Well, we know there's a heater, and we know we need 12 volts. Which one over here is 12 volts? Which one over here? A, B, C, or D? If you look at the, the truth table, then... Pink, remember, pink for GM is, is usually 12 volts, ignition. You come over here, D, which is D? This one. This is the 12 volts. So it can't be really easier than this. Like I said, 
all the years that I've been doing this, even in automotive, even in, in, in electronics, I'm not even sure of every, abbrevi- of every abbreviation on, on, a, on a computer module. I also have to look things up. Every make and model has their own abbreviations. BLM or, uh, uh, not BLM, I'm sorry, injector. You can figure out injector, VTC. Some are hard to figure out. So what do you do? You have to go to a cross-reference and see what it's referring to. Even though you go through the lines, you can always trace the lines and it'll bring you to that component. And you'll say, okay, oh, intake air uh, temperature sensor, whatever it is, whatever it is, right? But... This is this is really a hundred percent proof to you that you are in the right area and you're diagnosing more correctly. So if you don't see anything that I explain here, you can always go to the channel Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto and look and view different um, uh, videos over there, and you'll find things that maybe I did not mention here. And the other one, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. You'll, you'll, maybe you'll see things over there that, again, I did not mention over here in every single video. I don't want to be repetitious and keep on saying the same thing over and over again when there are videos out there explaining it before that I've done. So, anyway, good luck for those students in school. Hope to hear good, good news from you. Thanks.